What's going on guys? The CTA Prime back here again. Today this is going to be a quick video, but I wanted to give you an update on Raspberry Pi 4 emulation progress. The guys over at RetroArch and the Locka team have been working really hard. There's an alpha build available, but right now there's a lot of stuff that isn't working, especially N64, and that's the main thing that a lot of people want to see running on the Raspberry Pi 4, but we still have to wait a little longer. Unfortunately, in the build that I'm using right now on my Raspberry Pi 4, there is no sound available, at least as far as I can tell. I've tried through HDMI, I've tried through the 3.5 millimeter audio jack, and I just can't get sound. But nevertheless, I still wanted to show this off to you guys real quick and not leave you hanging on Pi 4 emulation. So if I head down here to information and check out system information, you can see here that I'm running this on a Raspberry Pi 4. This is a four gigabyte model, but this is also gonna work on the one or the two. Like I mentioned, it's really, really early, so there's a lot of stuff that's not working. So I would definitely hold off on this a couple weeks unless you really want to do some testing. It is available on the Lock Nightly Build site. I'll leave a link in the description if you're interested. And this build is using the OpenGL backend. Another awesome thing that the RetroArch team announced on their Patreon recently is that they've been testing Run Ahead on the Raspberry Pi 4, and Run Ahead will reduce any kind of input latency inside of RetroArch. It works flawlessly on a lot of the lower end emulators like NES, SNES, and Mega Drive. And what this is going to do is give us better input latency than the original consoles. So we can count on this being an awesome feature for the Raspberry Pi 4. And as it sits right now, we also have full speed PlayStation 1 emulation using PCSX Rearm. I'm going to be running Bloody Roar 2 real quick. I have the FPS listed in the top right hand corner. Like I mentioned, there is no sound output on the Raspberry Pi 4 yet with this build of Locker that I'm using. Now I completely understand that emulating PlayStation 1 at full speed really doesn't take a lot of power, but I did want to show this off because this is what we have right now on the Raspberry Pi 4. We still have to wait a while. This is new hardware, so we gotta wait for the software developers to catch up. I've tested about 7 PS1 games so far and I get full speed in all of them. I also tried several Sega Saturn games and unfortunately it's running at about 14 FPS. This is Sega Rally 2 using the Yoba Sanshiro core. Now I mentioned this in a previous video I did on the brand new Raspberry Pi. I don't think we're gonna get full speed Sega Saturn emulation anytime soon on this board. You gotta keep in mind that this is still a low end ARM chip. I've also tested Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance. This is Sonic Advance 2 running at full speed on the Pi 4. And finally, at least for this Pi 4 emulation update video, I tested some SNES games. This is Yoshi's Island running at full speed, and I do have that run ahead set. When it's set up correctly, there's absolutely no latency between the time you press the button and your character moves on screen. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I just wanted to give you this quick update. N64, Dreamcast, PSP is not working in this build. As soon as it's working, I will be doing a video. If you're interested in installing this on your Raspberry Pi, you can flash it to an SD card with Etcher. I'll leave a link in the description. It'd also be really cool if you could hit that like button or maybe subscribe to the channel so you can stay up to date with things like this. As soon as more is out for the Raspberry Pi 4, I will be making a ton of videos. But like always, thanks for watching.